Okay, this is Math 7, Unit 5, Lesson 1. Um, we're looking at today interpreting negative numbers. So we're going to review a little bit about what we know about sign numbers, meaning what we know about difference between positive and negative numbers today, and that's what we're looking at. So we begin with, first of all, the weather thermometer. And it says three of the numbers have been left off. What numbers go in the boxes? And so when we take a look at this thermometer, we can see that we have a space right here where this is where zero is at for the temperature here. That's kind of our, 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 our center point, zero, so to speak. Everything that goes this way is a positive number, 5, 15, 20. And everything that's below this line over here, we can see a negative 10 is going to be a negative value. When we look at the marks, we can see that we're going up by 5. So the spaces on this, in this uh, thermometer are, are increments of 5, 5 degrees. So I have 5 degrees plus an additional 5 degrees would make a 10 degrees Celsius here. Another 5, 15, 20. Another 5 makes 25 degrees Celsius. So that's on the positive side of things. To go down, it's the same increment here, going down by 5 degrees. So this becomes a negative 5 degrees Celsius followed by a negative 10. So what does the tem temperature show? In this case here, our temperature is located at the at a point. Let me get my markers here. Our temperature here is located at this point here between zero and negative five. And so just as an indicator here, we'd probably say it's a little bit more than than the halfway point, right? The halfway point here is about two and a half. I might say, and again this is an approximate, I might say that the temperature is about negative two degrees Celsius as what that temperature reading might be for what that is. Again, just an approximate value there. So you can estimate that yourself, see what you think. Moving down here, we have fractions of a degree. And what we can see is we have a question that says, what temperature is shown on each thermometer? And so in this case here, we can see they're all the same size and they all start at zero. And we're going up in increments of one, one, two, three, four. And so this first thermometer here is at four degrees Celsius. This one here, we're below zero, right? So we're gonna go down one, two, three. So we're at negative three degrees Celsius there. Here, we're going above five. So we're at positive five, that would be six. So we're not quite at six, we're probably at five and a half. You could write that as 5.5 degrees. You could write as five and a half degrees with a fraction, it's up to you. Here, we're gonna go down one, but notice we're not going down two. So we're between negative one and a negative two. Well, what's between a negative one and a negative two? It's gonna be a negative 1.5 degrees. Okay, so negative one and a half. And that's a great one there, just to make sure you understand like what's between a one and a two is a negative one and a half. So there's our temperatures there. Which temperature shows the highest temperature, so the greatest value? That's gonna be here. This is our highest value at 5.5 degrees. In terms of our lowest temperature, that would be down here at negative three degrees. We'd say this is our lowest. So this is our high, and that's our low. And we suppose the temperature outside is negative four degrees Celsius. Is that colder or warmer than the coldest temperature shown? So we're comparing it to the coldest. Our coldest temperature here is negative three, right? So if I'm comparing that to negative four, negative four is gonna be located about here. So that's actually gonna be colder. So in our case here, we'd say it would be colder. And the reason we know it's colder is because negative four is actually less than negative three in terms of its value. <laughs> okay, so that's that one right there. Let's take a look at the next side. Move on to this side here. We have seagulls, soar, shark, swim. It says here's a picture, and I'll zoom out a little bit here for this next one. It says here's a picture. Uh, some some sea animals. The number line on the left shows the vertical position of each animal above or below sea level in meters. <laughs> so this is our kind of our zero point right here. This is sea level at zero. Okay, okay, right there at zero. How far above or below sea level is each animal and measure to their eye level? That's our first um, act, first thing they want us to do. So the seagull here, first of all, we can look across and we could probably say that seagull. And again, mine might be a little different than your book, so just it's an estimate here. I would say a seagull is probably at about 10 meters. For the dolphin here, measuring at the eye level, I come right about there. And I'd say that dolphin there, it's hard to say exactly where you wanna go, right? This looks like two and a half. 
So you could say it's 2.5 meters. I think for the sake of argument here, you could say two, or you know maybe let's just go ahead and say a nice rounder number. Now I'm gonna do that because of what's coming up later, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and say it's about three meters for now, all right? I, don't, I think it's more like two and a half, but I'm gonna say three because of what's coming up next, okay? This guy here is at zero meters. He's at sea level itself. For our shark, do something similar here. We go across and we're gonna say the shark happens to be at negative three meters. And the little fish guy here, we could say that he's at negative seven meters. And the charming octopus is at negative 10 meters here. So I'm using whole numbers here just again because of what's coming up in the next question. All right, so our next question says, uh, a mobula ray is three meters above the surface of the ocean. Okay, so three meters above the surface of the, uh, of the ocean. So there's a ray somewhere right here, three meters. And there he is just hanging out there at three meters. How does this distance from the surface of the ocean compare to the vertical distance from the eyes of the jumping dolphin, the seagull, and the octopus? And so what we're being asked to do here is to compare the information, like how far apart it is from these other animals, and these other creatures, okay? So let's take a look here. I um, wish I could make this a little bit smaller here. So there's our picture, and the first thing it wants to do is say, how far is it away from the jumping dolphin? Okay, well, we're at the same point, three and three, so the difference between three and three is gonna be simply zero. From the seagull, the seagull's up here. So the difference between three and a set and a 10 is that space, and that's gonna be a difference of about seven meters, okay? You can think of it as 10 minus three, and that gets you to seven meters there. For the octopus, what's that distance there between the ray and the octopus? Well, our ray is here and our octopus is down there. So we're gonna have to drop at least three to go, first of all, and then we're gonna go down an additional 10, all right? Not worrying about whether it's positive or negative, just think if I took a piece of rope and went from the ray to the octopus, I would have to add three meters and an additional 10 meters for a total of 13 meters for the octopus, okay? So that's the idea there. It says an albatross is five meters, the next one, above the surface of the ocean. How does this distance compare to the other things? So we have an albatross, so it's right here at five. So our albatross is right here at five meters. Okay, located there. So we wanna compare its difference distance to the dolphin, the seagull, and the octopus again. So the distance between the albatross and the dolphin is the difference between five and three. So five minus three would be two. Okay, so our dolphin distance is two meters. The seagull is above, right? So distance between five and 10 is 10 minus five, which equals five. So we would say it's a distance of five meters. And again, the octopus, same idea, we're gonna go down five to start with and then add an additional 10. So five plus 10 is 15. So there's 15 meters difference between where the albatross is at five and the octopus down below. It says a clownfish is two meters. Clownfish is two meters below the surface of the ocean. So let's put this down here. Here's our clownfish is at two. So we put it here and we'll do clown at two meters below, put that minus two there. So looking for <laughs> how far it is from the dolphin. Dolphin, first of all, we're gonna go up two and then we're gonna go up another three, right? So two plus three is five, so five meters there. The seagull, we're gonna go up two and then we're gonna go up another 10. So what is two plus, oops, sorry, an additional 10? Two plus 10 is 12. And the octopus, we're at two, and we're going down to 10. So I'm looking for that distance there. It would be 10 minus two, which is gonna be eight. Eight meters for the octopus. The vertical distance of a new dolphin from the dolphin in the picture is three meters. What is the distance from the surface of the ocean? So our first dolphin is here, and it says the distance between that dolphin and a dolphin that I guess is jumping a little higher is three meters. So we're gonna to wanna to go up three meters. That's gonna put them right here at about six. All right, there's our new dolphin here at six meters because we're gonna be adding, we started with three and we added another three from what it said. So the distance to the surface of the ocean is here. And we would say the distance there is gonna be six meters. 
Okay, and that's the idea with that one right there. So, um, yeah, um, yeah. What is the distance from the surface of the ocean? Yeah, and that's it for that part. Um, we're gonna skip the "Are you ready for more?" and we're gonna just look at your lesson summary real quick. So let's take a look at your summary. The idea being here with today's lesson that we can use positive and negative numbers to represent temperature and elevation. Okay, and so that's what we do there. There, and a thing that didn't we didn't look at in the lesson part, but it shows up here, is what's called the absolute value. We use absolute value to describe how far a number is from zero. Okay, and so the example they give here is 15 and a negative 15 are both 15 units from zero. All right, that absolute value is what it looks like when we talk about a number and we put it inside these bars like this, okay? So like the absolute value of two would look like this and that means I'm talking about the distance from zero, all right? Distance from zero. So the distance from zero of, of the absolute value of two is two. But that's the same distance if I'm looking at the absolute value of negative two. The same distance is gonna be there. Meaning, if I have zero here and I'm looking at a point at positive two, the distance from there to zero is two, right? But if I'm at negative two, the distance here is still gonna be one, two. That's the distance. So absolute value is describing how far a number is from zero. So keep that in mind. I know there wasn't a lot we did with that today, but it is really what we're talking about here. And it's kind of, if you go back to our, our examples here, when you look at the distance from the ray, right, or even the dolphin to the, um, to the octopus, right, the d dolphin is here at three, and the octopus is here at negative 10. What we're really doing is we're adding the absolute value of those numbers together to find out how far apart they are from each other. So the absolute value of three is three, the absolute value of negative 10 is 10, and so the total distance would be 13. And that's in essence what we were doing here today with our pictures of the, of the animals. We were looking at the absolute value to find the sum, to find the distance between the animals there. All right, so now let's take a look at tonight's homework. Zoom in. All right, it was negative five degrees Celsius in Copenhagen and negative 12 degrees Celsius in Oslo. Which city was colder? So again, thinking about that number line or a thermometer, if this is zero, I would put negative five here and negative 12 down here. So colder is gonna be further away from zero and we would say 12 is further away from zero. So we would say that Oslo is gonna be the coldest temperature there. 2a, a fish is 12 meters below the surface of the ocean. Okay, what is its elevation? So here's the ocean, right? Okay, and you have a fish, right? So here's our fish swimming down here at 12 meters below. So it's gone down 12. Well, this is my zero point, and because we're going this direction, we would say this is gonna be at negative 12. So its elevation, because we're talking about how high it is, is gonna be negative 12 meters is its elevation. A seabird is 28 meters above the surface of the ocean. So a bird's up here. I'm gonna erase my little line here to extend my picture. So I have a bird, here's my bird. What a lovely bird that is, I know. And that bird happens to be 28 meters above the surface of the ocean, 28 meters. What is its elevation? Well, that's gonna be a positive 28. So we would say just 28 meters like that. If the bird is directly above the fish, how far apart are they? So we're talking here about the absolute value of the fish plus the absolute value of the bird. So that becomes 12 plus 28, which equals 40 meters. So these are gonna be 40 meters apart, and that's how we solve that, using the absolute value of both, just both uh, elevations and, and find the sum of those together. Okay, using greater than, equal, or less than, let's see what we can have here, three, is greater than negative three. 24 is greater than 12. 
negative 12 is a larger number than negative 24. A minus minus 5. Now minus minus 5 is actually going to be, a negative negative 5 is actually going to be a the same as positive 5. So 5 is going to be equal to 5. 7.2 is larger than 7. Over here we have negative 7.2 and negative 7. So this is going to be the greater one there. It's closer to 0. Okay, negative 3 over 2 is the same as negative 1.5, so it's the same value, it's going to be equal. 4 fifths, it's less than negative 1, right? And negative 5 fourths, this is a, in a sense, it's a bigger fraction, but because it's negative, it means it's further away, right? So here's 0, and here's 1. If you were to divide this into fourths, we would have 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, oh sorry, into fifths, sorry, into fifths, you'd have something like this, and so negative four-fifths would be there, right? Negative four-fifths is here. This is negative five-fourths, so if you kept going and went, here's two, this is one, two, three, that's gonna be located there, negative five-fourths, and this is zero, so the one closest to zero is here, negative four-fifths. Here we can reduce, this we can reduce down to negative three-fifths, so again, they're gonna be equal, and over here, the larger number is gonna be the positive one. Number four, a little review question here. Han wants to buy a $30 ticket to the game, but the pre-order tickets are sold out. He knows there will be more tickets sold the day of the game with a markup, oh boy, of 200%. How much should Han expect to pay for the ticket if he buys it the day of the game? All right, 200% is a very large markup, so we're gonna multiply by 200%. So if our percent is here as a percent, to turn it into a decimal, we're gonna move two spaces to the left, end up with 2.0. We'll take that value and multiply it by the cost of the ticket. So two times 30, which is gonna equal $60, right? That's the markup of $60, okay? But that's the 2%. Now think about this, that's the 2%. You still have to pay the original price. So let's go back to what we've done before. That's the 200%, but first you have to have the 100% as well. So 100% is one times $30, and we add that to this value here. So instead of doing one times $30, we end up with one times 30 is 30, plus the additional 60, which means it's gonna be $90 to pay for that ticket. Not a great deal if you ask me, all right? Because it's a 200% markup. So you have the original price, which is 30, 100% of that and the 200% markup to get to $90. How exciting, I think I'd buy it early. Bummer for him, he missed the pre-sale. Next we have a type of paint. It's mixed by mixing two cups of yellow and 3.5 cups of blue. Find a mixture that make the same amount, but a, a same, mix, same shade, but smaller amount. So instead of doing um, two to 3.5, we can make a little bit less and we can say, let's make one cup of yellow and we cut that in half, and half of 3.5 is 1.75 cups of blue, right? So I'm just cutting it in half, so I'm making half as much there. I can do the same thing with the next problem, all right? Looking here, find a mixture to make a shade of green, but a larger amount. Again, I started with two yellow and 3.5 blue, so to make a larger amount, the same shade, I could double everything by two. So we do five cups of yellow and seven cups of blue. That would work there, okay? If I wanted to find a shade that'll make a, a shade of green that's bluer, okay? Find a mixture, I can do the same mixture, which initially was two yellow and 3.5 blue. All I need to do is increase the blue. So I could do two yellow and I could do four blue, and that would be a bluer shade there. If I want to make it more yellow, again, starting with two yellow and 3.5 blue, I could increase this to three yellow and keep the blue the same, and that would make more yellow there. All right, that's it for today. We'll see you next time.